week's skills video, we're going to focus on something that may seem pretty simple to you, but it's one of the most important steps you will take in every recipe you make or bake. Measuring ingredients properly is really important. You see, cooking is not very forgiving. Baking especially. It's quite scientific and estimating ingredients could spell disaster. While you could probably get away with a handful of this or handful of that while you're cooking dinner, even the slightest baking miscalculation could turn your chocolate chip cookies into rocks, which would not be good. So understanding the correct measuring technique for a particular ingredient will guarantee better baking results. And this will be a the difference between recipe success and recipe failure. So carry on watching and I'll show you what you need to do. So the first measuring tool we're gonna to look at are measuring cups. So there's four cups here, one cup, half a cup, a third of a cup and a quarter of a cup. You can measure dry or wet ingredients with these cups. They've also got the liquid amount as well. So you've got 250 milliliters, 125, etc., etc. So to measure dry ingredients, for example, flour, you would take your spoon, or sorry, your cup, and then you will put a spoon into the mixture and then pop it into your measuring cup. The reason you do that is if you put the cup into the flour, it compacts the flour into the cup and won't give you a true amount. So you pop it in and then you scrape off the excess with the back of a spoon. And that is half a cup of flour. But say for example, you needed to um, have some brown sugar in a measuring cup. To do that, it's slightly different. So you'd put your sugar into your cup, but you have to actually pack it in. Because it's very sticky, you wouldn't get a true a measurement unless you packed it in completely. So you have to pack it in, and then you know if you've done it correctly, because when you turn it out, you should actually get a whole cup full. So you know you've done the right measurement. If your recipe said, for example, half a cup of milk, to measure milk, you'd make sure that your cup here is on a flat surface and you'd fill it right up to the top and then carefully pour it into your recipe. The next piece of equipment we're gonna look at is measuring spoons. So there's different measures on written on each one. So this one is a tablespoon and there's a, um, so you know what it is, it doesn't say tablespoon, but it actually says TBSP for tablespoon. That's a half a tablespoon. This is a teaspoon and it, that's written TSP. This one's half a teaspoon. This one is a quarter of a teaspoon and this tiny little one is an eighth of a teaspoon. With liquid, if you're measuring liquid, you need to have a very steady hand and pour very carefully over the recipe until it's at the top and then you pour it in. The final one I'm going to show you is if you've got something sticky like maple syrup or golden syrup, a good trick is to either pop your spoon in some hot water or you can spray your spoon with some oil and that will help your mixture to come off. So say, for example, I needed a tablespoon of golden syrup. I can put my golden syrup in here. Make sure it ends up being nice and flat to give it a wiggle so it's completely flat. Maybe just pop a bit more in. And then that will pour out a lot easier because it's been lined with the oil. Measuring with 
a jug, you would use a jug for liquid. You have to make sure that when you're pouring your liquid, you actually come to eye level. So usually they're marked on the side with the amounts. So one side is litres and the other side is pints. So we would probably use more of the litre side. So say, for example, I needed 200 millilitres of milk. I would make sure it's on a flat surface. I would get down to eye level, so I'd make sure I'm level with the jug and I'd pour it and just double check it's correct. So the last piece of equipment we're going to look at today is measuring with scales. So these are my scales here. They've got two buttons, one's unit and one is an on off and a tear button. So the tear is the actual measurement. So to turn it on, I'm going to press that there. Now you can measure liquid on a scale because um, the unit here says FLOZ, which is fluid ounces. If you press it again, it will show you a different um, measurement, which is pounds and ounces. This one here is millilitres. So you could put something on here and then measure milk on here as well. But the one we're going to look at today is grams. Now, if I put a bowl on my measuring scales now, it will measure the bowl. So I need to make sure I'm only measuring the ingredient I'm going to put on. So you always put your bowl on and then you press zero to make sure that you're only measuring the actual ingredient. Now say for example, I wanted 100 grams of flour. I would add in 100 grams and I'll keep an eye on the scale. Oh, I've gone just over there, so you can just take a little bit out until you get the exact measurement. And then you can take that bowl off and then pop it into your mixture. And then. So there is all the equipment you need to measure your ingredients when you're cooking and baking. If you always want to be precise, it's always better to use measuring scales as they're much more accurate and will give you a true reading. Whereas a cup isn't always a cup when you're filling it with sugar or flour. In the next video, we'll be using these measuring skills to do some baking. We're actually gonna make some savory muffins and there's lots of measuring involved to make those. So see you next time, bye.